Let's go around here. In today's exciting episode, we are talking about the Bosch track saw, the 18 volt Bosch track saw. So today's episode will kind of be a first impression. We'll do some test cuts and we'll just talk about who this saw could possibly be good for. Also, I need to build some sheet storage and we're gonna do that as well. Now I've had this saw for a few months and Bosch did send me this for free. So take everything I say with a grain of salt because I got this for free, I didn't have to pay money for it. Um, having said that, they do not know anything I'm gonna say in this video and they're not gonna watch it any sooner than you're gonna watch it. I do appreciate when tool companies put their tools in good boxes and this one seems to be that. So let's open it up. Keep in mind I've already used this, I've already taken it out of the box, so none of this is new to me but they have a place for the dust bag. That's for when you're not using a vacuum cleaner. They have a place for your charger, charge the 18 volt batteries. Always read the manual. Oh yeah, and this is the model number by the way. And here is the track saw itself. The 18 volt cordless track saw. I like this. I appreciate when they put this extra effort and don't just give you an empty box. Now I renovate houses, right? That's what I do for a living. And I use track saws a lot. And I've made videos in the past about how I think every builder should have a track saw. And it wasn't until I went to Europe where I actually started using them. I was building here for, I don't know, 13, 14 years before I started using these. I started with the Makita corded, eventually got the Makita 40 volt cordless track saw. And now more and more companies are coming out with cordless track saws. So let's see how this compares. Let's, let's have a closer look at what this one offers. So I have had this saw for a few months and I actually had to stop using it for a pretty important reason. I was cutting that laminate ply when I was building that laundry. I did a few test cuts to see how it would cut, see if it would give me that factory edge that track saws are good for. And no matter what I did, I could not get a clean cut with this saw. And the main reason I didn't talk about it is because I didn't actually have the Bosch tracks for the saw. I only had my Makita tracks. But what I found when I was using the Makita tracks is that the blade was too far offset from the rubber strip that is on the Makita track. See that gap in between the blade and the rubber strip? That is enough room for the laminate to chip up. I couldn't get a clean cut, and when you're doing cabinets like that, you have to get a clean cut. But I didn't want to say anything until I got these Bosch tracks that are made for the saw. So we're gonna test that. We're gonna see if we can get a clean cut with these Bosch tracks. There you go, there's one cut with just the dust bag. Just that. So it's great for if you're just quickly trimming a door or something, but don't expect uh, good dust extraction. I'm a big fan of dust extraction on most tools, and uh, that started with the track saw for me. You pretty much have to use dust extraction with a track saw. It's kind of designed that way with the way these dust cards operate. It's all enclosed, and it kind of gives it one point to exit. The spinning of the blade wants to push the dust that way. Okay, we're, uh, we're getting somewhere. The Bosch track and the Bosch saw 
understandably is a bit of pear. Where the track was sitting on the ply, it seemed to hold down right up to the cut. But then if you look on the other side where the track wasn't sitting, the timber definitely tore up. I asked Jess to go to Bunnings to get me some melamine because I think that's gonna be the real test of this track saw. You know, a thin hard layer on top of the timber that's easy to chip up with the blade that lifts it up. That'd be the real test, right? I'm enjoying using it, just generally, you know, safety first. Let's look at the blade change because I was pretty happy to see how Bosch do the blade change. The way you change the blade on the Keto 40 volt is you got this little thing here. It goes down and then I push that turquoise thing and when I let it up, it latches onto the turquoise thing and that's it locked. There's your bolt. The Bosch track saw. You lift this thing up here. And then when you push the saw down, clicks in place. And then you have access to the bolt, just like the Makita. I like that, that's really cool. So the Makita, the one that I've been using the most, that has a 165 millimeter blade, which is just over six inches. And the Bosch saw that we're looking at today has a five and a half inch blade, which is about 140 millimeters. So it's less. When the Bosch is on its track, it cuts a depth of 46 millimeters, and when the Makita 40 volt is on the Makita track, it'll cut as deep as 53 millimeters. You get a bit more with the Makita. And where I think the Bosch stands out is the depth adjustment. See that there? This is a thing of beauty. You just go like this, you push the red in, and then you can move it up and down. That's it. That's great, so quick. All you have to do is look at the different numbers, push it up, oh yep, 12 mil, I'm happy with that, let go. Now the Makita, and something that I'm gutted that they didn't sort out when they made this 40 volt version, they've still got the windy thing. Windy, it just takes that two seconds longer. Multiply that by the amount of depth adjustment you do and you realize that this is far more convenient. I think that's on Festo as well. One 4 amp 18 volt battery. Sorry, I got lost on the way to Bunnings and I actually ended up at Minor 10. <laughs> Oh, okay. so, <laughs> and a mad border plant. Oh, nothing wrong yeah. with that. So I'm, um, I'm still figuring this new area out. Kind of like how we figured out our website with Squarespace. We have some melamine, and we have time to talk about Squarespace, which is an all-in-one platform for you to build your online presence and run your business. Squarespace have a ton of features to make building a website super easy, such as their domain names. And buying a domain from Squarespace is simple because there are no hidden fees or price hikes. Each domain comes with an ad-free parking page and free WHOIS privacy on eligible domains. You can choose URLs from .com, .net, .org, or you can get more creative and have dot art for example. They also have a video studio where you can create pro level videos effortlessly. The Squarespace Video Studio app helps you make and share engaging videos to tell your story, grow your audience and drive sales. And of course Squarespace have portfolios and galleries so you can showcase your work or whatever it is you're selling or whatever it is you need a website for, you can showcase it to your clients in the best way possible. Squarespace is simple to use, and if you want to try it out for yourself, there's a free trial, so you've got nothing to lose. Then, once you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com forward slash Scott Brown Carpentry to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's cut some melamine. Now, one of the tests a lot of people request when it comes to tool reviews is 
the battery test, right? You know, how long or how many cuts can you get out of a fully charged battery? Well, I'm not sure about that, and to test it, I'd have to cut a lot of stuff. So that's the kind of thing I usually wait until I've done a long-term review. My Makita track saw, for example, I used for weeks before I had a rough idea of how a battery lasts in real-time use. So we're just going to have to wait and see on that one. I've got the fully charged 4 amp battery in here, and we're going we're gonna to build my little shelf thingy, or well, what's left of it. Now I've tried a few methods of cutting here. The roughest was level six, so like the fastest speed on the saw. That seemed to just push it too much, and if you look closely, you can see a kind of jaggedy, roughish edge. So I slowed it down to like somewhere in the middle, level three, and that seemed to help. Not as much chipping, still, you know, not, not perfect. I'm not sure how eco mode works on the saw, whether it just slows it down or not. It definitely felt slower, but uh, it seemed to be a better cut. Perhaps it's uh, similar to putting it on level three. Either way, I guess you save your battery and you also get a cleaner cut. Now the best cut was a method that I just made up on the spot, which is to do a pretend score cut. One thing the Makita saw has is it has a scoring function. And that's one of the best things about the Makita saw. Basically you push in a pin and then when you go to cut the piece of wood you're cutting, it only cuts the top layer off, which gives you a nice clean finish edge, and then you pull the pin out again to get the full depth of the cut, of the sheet, whatever you're cutting. This doesn't have that, so all I did was I just adjusted the depth, did the score, and then put the depth back to where it should be to cut the full thickness of the sheet. So although it doesn't have the scoring function, kind of just do it because the depth adjustment it's so easy. It's a good saw, man. It's not bad at all. Now, let's have a look at what I'm building here. Eh? Alright, so I made this shape here. I leant some plywood against the wall, and I went, oh yeah, that angle looks right. And then I made the bottom square with the angle. So it's like an L that's just been tilted. After I had the plywood shape, I've just cut these 4x2s to kind of match that shape. And it's even got this sort of ripping here, so it'll sit flat against the wall with a bit of DPC underneath. The approach I'm taking with this garage is simplicity. What is the solution that is the most simple? And some people get simple uh, confused with easy. I'm not going for like the easy option. I'm going for the one like figure out what I need to do the job and strip away anything else that doesn't need to be there. to free up this space. We just moved that over there. Now we've got a home for this. Here. Yeah. 
There you go, guys. I guess to conclude with the Bosch track saw, who should get it? Well, if you're on Bosch tools, it's pretty predictable, right? If you are on 18 volt Bosch tools and you want a cordless track saw, then you know, this is a no brainer, right? Um, if you just want a singular standalone track saw, well, some of the features that I talked about earlier might be important to you, and that would probably be a reason to choose it. Um, I'm sticking with Makita because one other thing that people don't think about when it comes to track saws is, sorry, I'm just gonna keep nailing this on. You don't just buy the track saw, you also buy the tracks. So I've got a three meter long Makita track, I've got a shorter track, I've got the clamps that fit into the track, I've got the connectors somewhere as well. So I would have to get all those things in order to use the Bosch track saw day in, day out. What do you reckon about that? Does that look uh, in the middle? And my four amp battery is still going strong. I didn't do that many cuts, so that's to be expected. 438. So yeah, in the meantime, what do you think of the Bosch track saw? Would you get one? Smaller blade, but some nice features. And in other news, what do you think of my plywood holder? Oh my God. What I'm definitely going to do is I'm definitely going to have some sort of strap that attaches to something here to something on the other side. We've already had two earthquakes since we've been here, so uh, the last thing I want is an earthquake to throw all that on top of me, or even worse, on top of my tools. A lot more space for more sheets. Oh, and we also have merchandise available in the link below in the description. The van t-shirt. Can he hang a door? Smoker time? It's all there. Thanks for watching.